Hello and welcome to this week's taste test which features three pumpkin items. Three new pumpkin items, or actually two new pumpkin, one returning that we haven't tried in a while. So we're gonna try all those and if you guys are excited about this week's taste test, give it a thumbs up, subscribe so you don't miss out. And I also wanna to talk to you guys about a haul I'm posting on Monday. It is a amazing Halloween haul. It's my favorite haul I've ever, ever done in the history of hauls. So I hope you guys can see it. It's 40 minutes, it's a long one, but I guarantee it is, it's chock full of ideas and fun things that I found going on that hunt. So let's check out this week's taste test video from Trader Joe's. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the first pumpkin item and it's the new pumpkin gnocchi. I cooked it according to the instruction, but I feel like it's gonna make it mushy because it said to just boil it in water. I tried to just saute it a little bit after I boiled it with some olive oil in a pan to get a little more crispy. Um, so next time I think I'm just gonna saute it in a pan, no water. Mm. Try it. It's kind of on the sweeter side. It's not like sweet, but there's a, um, there's something about this that, I would say that if I were to have this again, I would definitely need to find the right sauce to pair it with. Mm -hmm. uh, the flavor itself is is kind of bland. Um, yeah, it's not super potent flavor, I agree. Yeah, what do you think about it? I think it's actually really good. I like the um, subtle pumpkin flavor of that about it. I'm glad it's not like pow in your face. And I think that it pairs well with the olive oil and salt and pepper. I personally don't think it needs a sauce because I do enjoy the flavor of the gnocchi itself. Um, but if you did want to do a sauce, we could do the autumnal pasta. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, and I think that would probably be pretty good. So if I make it again, I can have that sauce for you and I can, Perfect. you know, I'll saute it a little longer in the pan so it can get a little crispy on the outside just because I think it would be better. <laughs> Benson, what did you think about it? Um, I actually tasted Kind of good. Oh, oh, you liked it, huh? Kind of good? All right. Um, next up, we're going to try the new spaghetti squash that is dried in the box. And it looks real mushy. Um, again, this is a boiling. It just has you boil it. I did a little Rayo's pasta sauce with this. Salt, pepper, and a little olive oil as well. So This is surprisingly good. You like it? Yeah. So it's kind of crunchy, actually. It, it has a good like crispness to it. Yeah. The it, it it's when you have the Rayo's tomato sauce with it, it tastes kind of like pasta, but with more of that like Are you all right? vegetable <laughs> crunch. Benson, I don't think liked it very much. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's real real life stuff right there. Okay, go ahead, honey. <laughs> so when it was one of the things is I, I walked by when you were uh, cooking it on the stove. And it just looked like if you were to take like the innards of a pumpkin and mm -hmm. throw it into some water. Uh, but ultimately, once it all is said and done, it was actually pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it is very mushy. So if you're a familiar with spaghetti squash, you can kind of cook out some of that water, but the fact that we're rehydrating it in water makes it a little more mushy. So I'm wondering if next time I cook it, I can boil it in the water and then same with the gnocchi, saute it in oil for a little bit and kind of re-dehydrate it or like have some of that water get cooked out of it so that it gives it a little bit more of a noodle texture because right now it just clumps up into a big ball and it it has a little bit of a crunch from the texture of the actual squash but it is definitely um, mushy like as a whole. When you bite into it, you can't, it doesn't separate from your fork, fork so you're taking huge bites. Yeah. Um, but it does take on the flavor of anything that you put with it. So if you like a certain sauce and you put it with that, the flavor basically just like, it becomes what that is. So that's something I really like about spaghetti squash is that it's something super versatile and it's um, very healthy for you if you wanna incorporate more vegetables in your diet. So. I think it's good. I thought it was good. Yeah, definitely. Vincent, did you want to say about it? Oh, um, about what? The thing you almost gagged on. Uh, I didn't like it. Yeah. At all. You didn't like it at all. Not a surprise. Mm. All uh, right. What do we got next? Yours. So mine. Okay. There's an. 
one more ravioli that Tim is actually going to dig into. This one is the Brussels sprout and uncured bacon ravioli. And I will say, when I was cooking this, the, oh, the whole house smelled like bacon. So I think there's a lot of bacon in it. It smells a lot like bacon. So I am excited. Yeah, I just um, did olive oil on this and some Parmesan for Tim so he could really taste the flavor. And also, um, I didn't think it needed salt just because the bacon is usually pretty salty as well as the Parmesan on top. So what did you think for the pairing? So uh, the pairing is good, mm -hmm. but what I'll say is that there's like the, the Brussels sprouts have like chunks. There's oh, like really? chunks inside of the ravioli. Mm, that sounds that, good. Yeah, but I wasn't ready for it. So mm. when you bite into it for the first time, just know that it's supposed to be like that. Um, and it does have a very smoky bacon flavor to it. Um, I I don't know. I feel like um, this is pretty good. Um, it's it's like I said, more of a smoky bacon flavor than like just straight up like you know what I'm used to, just bacon strips. Mm -hmm. um, but I can definitely get behind this one a lot more than a lot of other uh, raviolis. This one's this one's up there. It's pretty good. Nice. Do you think if you were to pair it with a sauce, do you do you think pesto might be good with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You think so? I thought maybe yeah. pesto just because. And there's a lot of flavors going on already with the Brussels sprouts, the bacon, and so adding another one is kind of like, I don't know. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan. <laughs> nice. Okay. okay. Well, we're going to move on now to this new focaccia bread. This is the caramelized onion and cheese focaccia, and Ooh. it smells incredible. It's Ooh. so soft. Vincent, you ready to try it? Uh-huh. Okay. Did you want to say something? Um, yes. Use your hand. Okay, what were you going to say? Um, I was gonna say, um, uh, can I choose the one in this next? Oh, yeah. Which and I was gonna say this one. Oh, okay, perfect. Ready to bite into it? Uh. Ooh, baby. <laughs> mm hmm. Winner, winner. Not chicken dinner. <laughs> That mm -hmm. onion, that French onion, this tastes like the French onion soup. This is incredible. With bread. <laughs> oh my gosh. So the bread is so soft. There's, I believe focaccia is made with like a lot of olive oil. So you really get that moisture from that oil. And the flavor from the caramelized onion, it's like out of this world. If you like French onion soup, like Tim said, it tastes almost exact. And it is... Oh my gosh, this is gonna be such a good salad bread for me. I yeah. love bread with salad. And so I think, I hope they have this year round or maybe <laughs> they don't. I don't know, this is delicious. What do you think? Um, I think it tastes, the, uh, the inside of it tasted like pizza. And the mm. inside I did um, like a lot. Mm. Like not like a fill of it, no. Pizza. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty accurate. Really accurate, <laughs> yeah. actually. I wouldn't have thought of that, but now that he said it, I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah. It definitely has that doughy pizza texture, for sure. Yeah. Smart boy. What do you think, Tim? Um, I think it's great. Like I said, it tastes like French onion soup. Okay. Uh, it's really got it all. Um, I don't know what else there is to say about it, but definitely a great, soft, delicious bread. Totally. I am 100% agreeing. Okay, let's d dive into the beer real quick okay. because I'm thirsty. Vincent has his water cup here. We're going to do more alcohol tastings, but Vincent's going to finish the taste test with us. Then we'll excuse him so he doesn't have to sit here through us tasting a bunch of different beers. And we're going to try two wines also. That's good, honey. It's just a taster. <laughs> Every time he's like, he forgets that we're doing taste tests. And he's pouring it as if we're going to like sit here and have a beer. <laughs> oh, I am. <laughs> I know. Well, you drink beer a lot faster than I do. I am like the <laughs> slowest beer drinker of all time. But I Cheers. smelled this right when you were pouring it. It smells Ooh, so nice. much like cookie butter. But let's see if I remember liking this or and, not. And let's not forget that this is over 9%. What is this? Yeah, 9.5. 9.5%. Oh my gosh. This tastes exactly like a Bath & Body Works candle would smell. Like it smells... It tastes like a pumpkin candle or something. Is this... Did they reformulate this? I don't know. Because this it tastes does. way better it than It does. I agree. I think it tastes better too. And maybe they did because the can's different. So, it, this, I don't know. This is delicious though. This tastes a whole lot more like cookie butter than uh, than what the I remember. The previous one? Having. Yeah. I agree. The other one just tasted like an IPA or something like that. This is great. I, oh, 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 I know. Yeah. But some people might not like this because it's definitely on the like sweeter 
um, very fragrant side. And like I said, it really does remind me of like a pumpkin candle. Yeah, um, like a pumpkin does. spice candle. So if that kind of thing is like, a, if you're having aversions to stuff like that, like perfumey scents, which some of them I do too. <laughs> you were already eating the bread. If you like those sweeter beers, then I feel like this is just definitely, this has your name on it. But if you don't, then stay, steer clear. But 9.5% where? Like where? This is so dangerous. It, it definitely can creep up on you. Mm -hmm. For sure. All right, we're going to move on now. Vincent's already getting into the cinnamon sugar swirl bread. I was going to save that for last, but this kid's chowing, so let's just get into it. Okay. This is my favorite. Is it? Uh-huh. Yeah, well. Oh my cinnamon. gosh. <laughs> yeah, my favorite too. It's actually, like I cut the loaf and it has swirls of cinnamon throughout it too. Oh my gosh, this is it's so delicious. Mmm. This actually brings me back to when I was a kid. I had this little french fry kit. It was like a McDonald's one where you took Wonder White Bread. It had to be Wonder Bread. That was in the instruction. And you use this like little machine to like cut these little fries out, out of the bread. And then you sprinkle them with cinnamon and sugar. This literally tastes almost exactly like that and it's totally bringing me back to my childhood. You're like having a flashback right uh -huh. now. <laughs> Um, well, I will just say this is like a cinnamon roll that th is like just like spot on like it just You know when you have a great bite of cinnamon roll sometimes the, You get a bite and you're like, oh, it's okay. This one's the one that's got all the flavor. Yeah, the right texture and Oh my gosh, it's, it's good. So good. It's funny because all these things that are coming out right now for fall like the um the cinnamon What was that? I already forget but the cinnamon roll like mix that I showed in the haul these things are giving me like very holiday vibes and I'm so not ready for that yet because I'm so here for Halloween, but tasting some of these foods, I'm just like, wow, okay, <laughs> maybe I'm more ready than I think. I don't know. It tastes really good and it's rainy today. So it's, we've got like this really cozy feeling. So this is the perfect day to try the cinnamon sugar bread. Yum. Benson, you love it, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, he's chowing. Okay, so while he's working on that, we're gonna actually try this papita um, salsa because I forgot if I like this or not. So we're gonna give this a little whirl. What chips are we using for this? We are using the same ones we used last time, the late July. The Costco uh, multi-grain massive bag of tortilla chips. I'm actually gonna shake this up a bit so we can get all the chunks from the bottom to the top. And then we're gonna try this and see if we were, whoops, on my new placemat. I gone and did it. Ready? Let's do it. Did you wanna yeah. try one of these, Benson? Um. You want me to see if it's spicy first? Mm -hmm. Okay, no. I'm going in for a second? I'm going in for a second, that's pretty good. Smoky. Very Chipotle flavored. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I I like that um, last one so much, I faced the whole time thing. Well, yeah. then you really did like it. Um, this one has a good kick to it, the salsa. It's spicy. Yeah, it's spicy, yeah. but in a good way. It has a lot of flavor. This one definitely has like the chipotle undertone. So if you like that flavor, this might be one of your favorites. And actually, it's way better than I remember it being. And I think it's because I tried it with those um, pumpkin tortilla chips that are just oh. not, they're not good. So this is great. I like that a lot. I'll tell you a few weeks back, we had a salsa that was made out of peanuts. I think remember? Oh, that was months ago. Well, however long it was ago, that yeah. reminds me a lot of it. Whatever that, that salsa was that we had, this reminds me, except obviously it doesn't have that peanut flavor to it. Um, and it has a little bit more spiciness, but mm -hmm. this is a good one. I, I actually really like this. I did too. All right, last two items of food we're gonna be trying before we get into more of the alcohol tasting is the two yogurts. So we have this cashew pumpkin yogurt, and then we're gonna try after that the Greek Honeycrisp apple cinnamon yogurt, which is brand new. So I think we had this one last year, this pumpkin cashew, but I don't, I can't remember. My memory, there's so many pumpkin products every year, it's really hard to remember what we had, but. Um, this is much more watery in texture than the Greek yogurt's gonna be. Okay. 
Mm, that's pretty good. Yeah, I think it's pretty good too. For for the um, non-dairy yogurt, I really like the coconut yogurts, but this one actually has a really good flavor. It's not too overpowering of the pumpkin, and you get more of that yogurty flavor. So, I can tell he likes it because he took the tiniest little bit, and, and then he went it. back for a big scoop. So, <laughs> well, you can have that, honey, if you want. Uh, uh, uh. No, okay. Do you like this though? Is this pretty good, Benson? Uh, I do really like it. Because I think we do. I just did that so I could uh, get a better taste of it. Oh, okay. Well, now that you've gotten a good taste of it, it looks like you like it because you're <laughs> getting it all over yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're moving on to the Honeycrisp Apple Cinnamon Greek Yogurt. This is a brand new one this year. And oh my gosh, this yogurt, the second you open it, has tons of, uh, it looks like cinnamon flakes in here. And it looks chunky, like tons oh. of apple in here too. So that's fun. Is that dark stuff? Is that is that apple? Yeah, or? those are little pieces of apple. Okay. So you want to get some apple chunks and taste? No. Mmm. Mm. The apple is good in there. I was not expecting that. Yeah, that is actually pretty good. Mmm. It's much thicker than the last one. That one was the last one was pretty watery. This one is much thicker. Yeah, I prefer um, the watery texture, honestly, but I like the chunks of apple in this so much that it doesn't really remind me of yogurt. I don't know, it tastes like I'm eating something different, like almost like I an oatmeal or something, I don't know. I think, I think it tastes like yogurt to me, but I will say that the cinnamon flavor is really dominant. It is. It's a strong cinnamon flavor. So I liked both of those. I, would, I don't really know which one I liked better, both of them in their own right are both very good. Did you have a, preferen a preference or? So I'm kind of torn because I really liked the cashew one for the lightness and the flavor. I loved the texture of it and I just mm -hmm. thought all around it was a really quality, good product. And the Greek yogurt, I really enjoyed because of the apple chunks and the cinnamon flavor. The texture, like Greek yogurt, we all know it's very thick. And sometimes you just don't, yeah, you know, like sometimes I'm just not into like having a thick yogurt. So I think for me though, that the apple in this is the star of the show and it is so delicious. Like every little yeah. piece of apple, it's, it's almost like eating apple pie. Like I, yeah, I, I bite into those yeah. apples and it tastes like apple pie. So if you just close your eyes and imagine this is apple pie mm -hmm. filling, you, um, you will have a very decadent dessert slash healthy lunch or snacks. So I don't know. I like them both. I think they were both really good. Yeah, I'm glad we way. tried them both. Good, so. good. Well, I think Benson's going to disappear now and we're going to have a little bit more of uh, beer and wines yep. and all the good stuff. Beer so. and wine. So say goodbye. Rawr. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say goodbye? Ah, uh, goodbye. And we're back. And Benson's back here running around. But <laughs> Tim had a little announcement he wanted to make. Uh, so I have been working on designs. I mentioned this one other time, but I designed my own shirts and I've got this one here ready for the Halloween uh, holiday. And so uh, if you guys are interested in most of the videos, I think all of the videos at the bottom, you can actually see some of my designs or you can check out. Uh, no, I've, actually they scroll so you can actually click. Oh, you should be able to I see the products below the video. Um, but also I'll put the link in the description if you want to go check out any more of my designs. Um, and I'll also take custom designs. If you've got any ideas, I'll make something special for you. All right, we're moving to some beer. So which one should we try? Let's try this blonde, the blonde ale first. Okay, so what is this? The Glarita Light Blonde Ale, bright, crisp, refreshing, 4.3%. We started with the biggest percent first, but I just felt like that other one the cookie butter one went well with like the foods that we were trying at the time. You uh, you did a bigger pour than I did. Did I? I you see, sure I forgot too. <laughs> it's like when you start pouring, you just forget that you're pouring for the taste and not for like your normal day, everyday thing. So uh, as we're trying these, just so you guys know, these are local to us, but so you may not have these beers at your, at your Trader Joe's, but there will be a local beer that you definitely gotta try because the Trader Joe's does a good job of procuring some good ones or some bitter ones, apparently, but here we go. Okay, I don't know what's wrong with me, but these I'm not into the like light blonde ales anymore. I like the hazies. Um, Taste buds are changing. So it says bright, crisp, refreshing. I think the first two, it's bright and crisp, but 
I don't know. I'm, I'm with you. It's it's uh, a little bit harsh. It's yeah, a little it's, bit. Yeah. It's a little bit uh, sharp on the taste buds for sure. Mm, okay. <clears throat> After I let it sit on my tongue for a minute, I took another sip, and it's not as bad. I think it maybe maybe it's the difference between the cookie butter beer, but I haven't had that in a while. So when we took the pause, we took a pause, and so our taste buds are completely like cleared out. You would say, right? <laughs> yeah, they are. And the cookie butter beer is so much different because it's more of that like smooth, rich like sweet flavor mm -hmm. and this is like more of like light sharp like yeah not as not as smooth so uh <laughs> you're not alone this one is not my favorite either. i'm just laughing because our dog is drinking water right now so if you're hearing the lapping noises of water it's just <laughs> our dog she they just had dinner so they're thirsty <clears throat> okay so all in all this one is not it's not it it's just not it i'm not a fan you're not a fan? No, not a fan. But you did drink it. You wanted to finish mine too? Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> what are husbands for, you know? Help you finish your stuff. And it's great because I'm vegetarian, but Tim's not. I was going to say Vincent. Tim's not. <laughs> and so he always he can always eat my, like, if we're at a restaurant and I'm not going to finish my food, he always takes my plate. He finishes it. And you know how couples, like, steal each other's food? I never touch his because he's always got meat on his plate. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> so it's a win-win for both of us. It's win-win for me, for yeah. sure, because... Well, for me, too, because you I take the a, food and it doesn't go to waste. That's, that's I guess, a win-win. <laughs> You're right. All right, we're moving on. I didn't want to pour yours because you you are judging me on my pours. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries at all. Um, I smelled this one. This one smells drastically different, and it, you can notice. Yes. Is this a hazy IPA? Because um, it looks hazy. It's a hazy. hazy pale ale, actually. Yeah. So... Is that the same as IPA? Uh, India Pale Ale is what IPA stands for. Um, India, I guess right? India Pale Ale. Oh, India, okay. But I don't know. I mean, maybe this is just a pale ale. Um, Let's try it. I don't it. know. We'll see, but it looks good. Oh, yeah. I like this one. This one's much better. Much better. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm giving up on the light ales and things. I am I am officially announcing our conversion <laughs> to the hazy IPAs. Um, or hazy pale L's even. These are, this is delicious. I'm gonna make the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, Katie has switched to India Pale L's. Hazy India Pale L's, thank you. Oh, you downed that, you like that, huh? Okay, so it's smooth, it's crisp, it's refreshing. It's all the things that that other beer claimed to be and wasn't, and this one is. So, go Top Gun beer. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, yeah, but I really enjoyed that. I thought that was really good, so. We're moving on to the wine now. Okay. My favorite. I love wine. Wine is so, such a good, wine is such a good time. This is the best wine opener, by the way. And if you're trying to look for it, uh, Costco sells it and that's where we got it. And I can also put a link. I think Amazon has it too. So, so. Um, if you're not a Costco member, I can put that for you guys if you want to check it out. But I love this wine opener. We've had it for years. My parents got it for us for Christmas one year. And then I gifted it to my best friend and her husband um, one year too. So. Okay, so now we're moving on to these. They're called natural wines. These are $3.99, which um, is kind of crazy because apparently if you go, so San Diego has a ton of these natural wines and I guess they're quite pricey um, because of the cleanliness of them. They're very clean wines, they're vegan and sustainably, sustainably farmed. farmed. Yeah. Organic. organic, so you're getting like a lot of good stuff with this wine um, and this one that we're tr trying right now is a Chardonnay, 2020 Chardonnay. So let's, I'm just trying to see if it says anything else. Nope, nothing else. So let's try the Chardonnay. I mean, three ninety nine. dollars are you out of your mind? Every time. <laughs> <laughs> let's try it. Ooh, that's... Not a Chardonnay. No, that's like super sweet. I know, it's... That's a Chardonnay. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It tastes yeah. like grape juice. It's like sweet. You know, it's it's from 2020. Did anything good happen in 2020? <laughs> I think some people will really enjoy this wine. It's not bad. It's smooth. So for me, if I'm picking a Chardonnay, I want more buttery, more oaky shards. I want something that's going to give a little bit more depth of flavor. This is definitely more of like a light summer wine. I, would, I wouldn't categorize it. This kind of reminds me of... Um, 
one of the uh, uh, New Zealand wines that we've tried, and I feel like we did like it. So I think it tricked it tricked my brain for a minute, thinking like, oh, it's a Chardonnay, and I don't like it because of the sweetness about it. But I think it's a good wine. It's just, um, to me personally, I just don't know if I would categorize it as a Chardonnay. What do you think? I think three ninety nine is still cheap because this is still better than that mm -hmm. price point. Uh, but I'm I'm having a difficulty like getting through this one. It's it's a little bit too sweet for me, yeah. um, and you know it, it's it's good to know though that it's a clean wine that it's you know sustainable and it's vegan and that probably not it's not even though it's sweet it probably isn't going to give you a hangover. Right. Um, so that's that's a redeeming factor to it. But if I had to grade it solely on the taste, I would I probably wouldn't give it high marks. Okay, that's fair. All right, we're moving on to the second clean wine made with organic grapes. And this one is the Cabernet Sauvignon, and this is a 2018 for $3.99. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> okay. And this is also the last product that we're trying today. It is. Here we go. Cheers. At on. least on camera. Ah. <laughs> Wow, that's way better than that I last agree. one. I agree. I agree, but we are red wine drinkers, so let's preface that first. We like red wine. I like white wine, though. Oh, you do? Yeah, I mean, well, that that last one just, it wasn't, like, we like red wine, which means we should be more critical of red wine. And this one is pretty good. Again, three ninety nine. like, that's a steal. It really is a steal. Yeah. Well. I mean, come on. I'm always the one that's like suggesting we have white wine. Now you're claiming you like white wine? Oh, uh, I mean, cuz you I will like other white wine. 10 out of 10 pick one. a red wine over a white. If I'm saying, "Hey, what do you want to drink tonight?" <laughs> if I'm making a pasta dish, I always bring out a bottle of wine and like once a week, yeah. He'll choose red all the time. And even in the summer, 110 degrees out and he's like, "I want a red wine." I'm like, "Okay." Well, that's because we get better red wine than we get white wine. That's not true. I love the white wine I get from Trader Joe's. Yeah, but I like red wine better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see, my point has been proven. Thank you. I should be a lawyer. <laughs> Lawyered. All right, let's take another sip. Okay. Oh, that is good. That is smooth. That is light and also flavorful. I like everything about it. Yeah, and you really got to appreciate the fact that, like, the, the winemakers... They go through so much more effort having to keep it vegan, having to, having to keep it, um, you know, sustainable and all of these things. And for them to still put it at a three ninety nine price point, like, I can't well, feel like it's going to stay at like that price forever. Well, at least at Trader Joe's. Because Trader yeah. Joe's is the queen of, I know it's a Joe, but she is a queen of keeping um, prices so low for everybody. And I know things have gone up, but... Um, still, you have to look at the big picture and find, and Trader Joe's is big on finding vendors, trying to figure out the best price points for their customer. That brings me back to me talking about in the hall how the discontinued products don't necessarily mean discontinued anymore. It just means that they're not going to be available in the store for at least past 30 days, like every 30, 60, 90 days. If it's not going to be there, it's going to be marked discontinued. And the reason for that really is, is because Trader Joe's not only is extremely um, picky about quality, they're also uh, very fair with pricing. So there was an example of a vendor that tried to raise prices for one of our um, deli meats. And we said, you know what, forget it. Like, because they tried to charge us more and tried to charge us shipping fees and, and Trader Joe's said no, because they didn't want to pass that on to the customer. And so, um, you know, here we are, it was like maybe three months later, and then what do you know? The product showed back up at Trader Joe's because Ooh. the company came crawling back <laughs> and said, please take us back Trader Joe's. And so they did, but at the same price. So if you are ever um, wor like worried about something being discontinued or the price, the prices are gonna go up uh, regardless, just based on how much the cost of goods are and in, in like ingredients. Inflation and everything. Ingredients yeah. cost more. So the vendors obviously are gonna have to charge Trader Joe's more because ingredients cost them more. So they'll be taking a loss. Trader Joe's will be taking a loss. So if you do see things going up in price, a dollar, 50 cents, whatever, that is the reason. But I feel like they've been still very fair throughout this. And um, that's my spiel, that's it. Uh, a, little, a little lesson <laughs> in macroeconomics right Yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I cannot wait for next week because like I said, there's a second wave coming in and I think there's going to be a lot of new fun products. So I hope you guys are stay, you stay tuned, you're subscribed, your notifications are turned on. You're giving me thumbs up for these videos so we can get these videos out here because we're all working together as a family and we want my videos to do well so I can keep buying all this stuff to show you guys. <laughs> so I care about you and love you all so much. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you guys in my next video, which is that spooky Halloween haul. Watch it. It's good. It's so good. Bye.